Listen, Fury Usyk undercard has been confirmed. Before we get into that, have you heard anything? Last time you was on the show, <laughs> you give us some great inside information about Tyson Fury, what was going on inside the camp and whatnot. Anything going on now? I heard anything through the great I'll point? tell you what. Do you want to know, on, who, Johnny, you want to know who the mole is? <laughs> do you want to know who the mole Absolutely, is? Absolutely, yeah, come on. His dad and his brother. They are the mole. Wow. Because you listen. I said nothing his dad hadn't said. I said nothing his brother hasn't said. Okay, I might have spring, sprinkled a bit of seasoning on it. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, <laughs> Right, his dad, I, it's on record his dad said, this, you know, the people that are in the camp, the camp's this, that and the other. It's on record his brother said there's too many bike slappers there. I know the mm. in, this, in, 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 in that camp. Mm. And, and they, they, they're justifying their job and they're whispering stuff. Wait, so, spe- so they, they're, they're walking around trying to find out who the mole is <laughs> and the mole is actually right there. That's it's the them. mole. <laughs> and you know what I mean? And so I just think to myself, yo, listen to what you're saying. Tyson's not an idiot. Yeah. But Tyson is he's the he's the head of the snake. So mm. they've all got to be good and behave themselves because they want to stay on that payroll. So they're gonna tell him what they think, you know, to ingratiate themselves around him. His brother and his dad, they're his people. And they don't like the people that are around there and they're not happy. But then people that are around there are thinking, I'm getting picked good here, so I'm gonna tell you what you want. I don't dislike Tyson Fury. I just call out his BS. Mm. I don't dislike him. Okay, they're laughing about it, him and Spencer Oliver. But Okay, it's clickbait, but it's false information. Would you expect that from a Sky Pundit? False information. And then talking about you put seasoning on it. Because everybody thought that you knew an actual mole. And then to come out and say that Tyson Fury and Shane Fury are the mole, they haven't said anything different from what I'm saying. Well, a mole doesn't come out in public and say what they said. Shane and John said what they said in public. A mole leaks information to whatever source for financial incentives or whatever agenda they have. And for months, we believed there was an actual mole in the camp. I mean, it couldn't have done Tyson Fury and his camp any good. They're probably looking at each other. Are you putting stuff out there? And why did he decide to come out with that just now? Is it because now Sky are getting in on the pay-per-view money with the Saudis? Maybe someone told him you better clean that up. Ethically, it don't seem right what he did to say there was a mole. Why didn't you just say, well, look what Shane and John Fury are saying. Is he that desperate for attention yeah that when you talk you have to sprinkle seasoning on it so why should i believe anything you say after this our sky sending him out there to be a buffoon i would expect better from a former world champion and a sky pundit is it a story he concocted because there is an actual mole but he wants to put it out there that there isn't a mole so that will end all speculation and take the heat off him and sky i don't know with this guy i don't know Apparently Tyson Fury aired him out at the airport. So maybe he's feeling a bit para. I don't know. The more active and the more youthful Zerdo Ramirez becomes a two-weight champion, beating Arsene Gulamarian over 12 rounds to become WBA cruiserweight champion. Gulamarian at 36 and nothing to show on his resume for 21-22. No fights. One fight, 2023, and this was his first fight this year age 36 the inactivity and i would argue the questionable resume looking at his five world title fights winning title fights before he lost to ramirez on saturday the likes of riyad Mehdi. yeah he beat tony yoka recently but yoka hasn't been on it for a long time has he who's mark flanagan kane watts constantine bergialu alexi igorov none of them opponents have been anywhere near the elite cruiserweights in recent years. Arguably, Ramirez was the best fighter Gulamarin came up against. I think this is one of them occasions where you can look past the jump in weight from 175 to 200 and actually look at the quality of opponents that the likes of Ramirez has faced to Gulamarin. Joe Smith, last time out at 175, good win. Lost a wide points decision to Dimitri Bivol. We're not going to hold that against him. For the WBA 175 pound title. And he got washed in that fight. He got washed. And I would argue that the competition that Ramirez fought. A super middle and light heavy in America. And although at a lower weight class. Was of a superior quality to what Gulamari has been facing. And he just waited too long to pull the trigger Gulamarian. He looked like he was the harder puncher. He did win some of the rounds. But Ramirez quicker hands and feet. For the most part outboxed Gulamarian. Didn't look like he had much southpaw training. The amount of times Ramirez landed that left uppercut. 
that was one of his standout weapons throughout the fight. Ramirez boxed a clever fight, didn't look to load up. He left that to Gulamarian. It was like touch, 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 hook, touch, 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 left uppercut, touch, touch, touch. And he piled up the points when Gulamarian did get through. I think Ramirez felt it, but he handled the power pretty well and stood toe-to-toe happily. There were some rounds Gulamarian landed some very good punches, but Ramirez just threw too much and landed way too much. In the second half, when Ramirez wanted to take a rest, Gulamarian just let him lean in and clinch. Didn't do much about it. Let Ramirez work at his own pace, and when Ramirez turned it up, his punch variety was way too vast and way too of a higher quality for Gulamarian. But it was a competitive good fight to watch. I scored it 117-112. I think all three judges had it 118-110. I believe there was a few swing rounds. A lot of people would disagree with that. I believe there were, though. I believe there were. A lot of people talk about David Benavidez all the time, all the time. But I think Zerdo has had a better career. He's won a strap at 168. He's challenged himself at 175. And now he's won a cruiserweight title. But it seems like everything is Benavides, Benavides every second. That's strange. That's strange to me. He could have waited around longer for a big fight with Canelo. But he didn't do that. He moved on. He was even talking about fighting Anthony Joshua and knocking him out. Saying he's got a weak chin. I'll knock him out. And even today they were saying he's planning to move up to heavy. But don't get me wrong. I don't think he's an Andre Wooder. I think he'd actually challenge Joshua. I think he would. He actually fought a cruiser. While Ward spoke about, I was going to fight Tony Bellew and I was going to fight Joshua. Yo, we might see Ramirez move up to heavy. I don't know about the Joshua fight, but I tell you what, it'll be a good fight. All Mexican heavyweight showdown, him and Andy Ruiz. But then again, I don't know if Andy's going to show up in a boxy ring again. Boxer and Ben Shalom fell to nail down a title fight for Richard Riakpo against Gulamarian last year. It looked like they tried the whole sacrifice your whole life to become a boxer fighter. And Gulamarian didn't go for it. He said, yo, you can come over France and take the fight. And they should have sent Richard over there. Gulamarian, he's got 19 KOs in 27 wins. He can punch a little, but he's limited. That's a fight Richard Riappor could have won. You know, the upcoming fight with Billy and Smith, this could have been a unification. Bit of a wasted opportunity there. Ramirez moves to 46 and 1. 46 and 1. No draws. 30 knockouts. And it looks like Alexei Igorov who has been previously outpointed by Gulamari and could be next up. You can sugarcoat what you want. Adam Azim has ducked Dawn Smith. I mean, we had the official notice today from the EBU that he's relinquishing his belt. With all due respect, no one's calling for Adam Azim against Harlem Eubank. Everyone's calling for Adam Azim against Dawn Smith. I mean, even the way I had to find out that he vacated and relinquished, you know, he himself didn't, make a video and say, yeah, I'm giving up the belt or anything. Knowing that this is one of the biggest topics in British boxing. You didn't even face your fans, Dalton Smith fans or boxing fans, and neither did his promoter. Instead, the EBU had to contact Eddie or Eddie had to contact the EBU. And we found out from Eddie Hearn. And we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. Talking about we had to wait for the fight on Saturday when Dalton fought Sabeda to make our decision. When your decision was made as soon as the mandate was ordered. I'm trying hard not to lose respect for Adam Azim because Ben Shalom is just a If the Harlem Eubank fight happens, I hope Harlem beats the brakes of him, I can't lie. Not because he ducked the fight, not because he ducked the fight, but because he's moving sneaky. He's not accountable, him and his promoter. I don't have to respect or agree with your decision necessarily, but at least have the backbone to stand on your decision. At least do that. And I know some people will say, well, why should he do that? It's a two-way street. You want all the promotion from the media that you can get. You want all the promotion you can get. And when it goes your way in a positive direction, you're cool with it. Promotion leads to endorsements, sponsorship, other revenues outside going in the ring. When you've got to accept the negative as well. You can't just play the camera at complimentary angles that make you look good every time. You've got to be there, accountable, for when you don't bring the product to the boxing fan. I'm a consumer. Took too long for Amir Khan to give us the Kell Brook fight. It did. As for comparing Adam Azim to Amir Khan, at least Khan came on camera and told us why he wouldn't fight Brook. You need a belt. You need to do this. Whole load of stupid excuses. 
but at least he was in the firing line. It's called accountability. So what did I think of them bringing Adam Azim and Harlem Eubank out at the O2 Saturday gone at the Fabio Wardley Fraser Clark show? Well, you know, they're trying to make it like we had this in the stash all along, you know, and you can see it was something they rushed to try and silence the critics of why Adam Azim is not defending his European title and why he's not challenging for the British title when he's been mandated by the British Boxing Board of Control to do so. I didn't think nothing of it. You know, it's no shock Ben Shalom would try something like this. I actually didn't know that Adam Azim and Harlem faced off. I saw Eubank and Barry McGuigan in the ring. That's who I saw. Adam Azim says the fight is signed. They just want a location. And if that's the case, well, it's all set to go. Now, Sam Jones has said Chris Eubank knows his way around the game. If the fight is not signed, Eubank has got Ben Shalom on the ropes, hasn't he? Because you've done all this, let's bring him out and get the crowd excited. Even though no one knew who Harlem Eubank was, they knew who Chris Eubank Sr. was, and some of them knew who Barry McGuigan was. But nevertheless, you know, this is what we're advertising. But like Sam Jones said, if the fight isn't signed by both parties and still to be negotiated, Eubank is going to hem Ben Shalom up for all he can get for that fight. You need that fight now. This is your damage control, yeah? So you want Harlem Eubank in that ring? You're going to have to pay. You're going to have to pay Harlem Eubank more than what that fight is worth. And then you've got to go talk to Callie and Nice, Wasserman, Harlem Eubank's promoter. You've got to go talk to them. Or why the fight shouldn't be on Channel 5, perhaps? Or why it shouldn't be on The Zone? And if Ben Shalom does get that fight on Sky, on Boxer, you're going to have to pay for them to sacrifice not putting the fight on the channel where they've promoted you, Bank Channel 5. You're going to have to pay for that sacrifice and you're going to have to pay a lot of money. This is going to end up way more expensive than going through a purse bid situation with Dalton. And then to top it off, Adam Azim is not going to fight Dalton Smith because Adam's only 21, he's only had 11 fights. Dalton has had 16 fights and he's 27, I believe. So he's had five more fights, six years older. Well, Harlem Eubank has had 19 fights, three more than Dalton, and he's 30 years of age. So the whole Adam's had more fights and he's older explanation why they didn't take the fight makes what sense now. But then again, Harlem didn't fancy the fight with Dalton Smith either. And what's this all about now? Like, Dalton Smith shouldn't be struggling to get these guys in the ring. Because of some fearsome reputation. I mean, he's hardly a Meldrick Taylor or an Aaron Pryor or a Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. at 140, is he? What's going on? And let me tell you this. I'm not sure about Harlem's chin. I'm not sure about the chin. But he's as fit as anything and he can box. So you're going to overpay Harlem for a fight that is by no certainty a winning fight for Adam Azim. And you're not going to be able to do any deal. Yeah, you need to sign with us to get the fight. Harlem signed to Cali and Nice and Wasserman. And as for, um, well, yeah, the fight needs to be on Sky because it's the bigger platform. Oh, no, it's not. The Channel 5 cards, which are not well promoted, do bigger numbers than Sky in Britain, than The Zone and TNT. It's terrestrial television. And... If Ben Shalom thinks Eddie Hearn is a pain in the fucking jacks, wait until you have to deal with Chris Senior. Ezra Aaron Yeka, 12-0 with 10 knockouts, is a Nigerian light heavy. This is the guy who interrupted Ben Whitaker when he was talking in a press conference last week. Ben Whitaker responded to that incident in a subsequent interview. I think we realised in the week we're going to have to start banning certain people who weigh kind of near you from press conferences because they just seem to be forming a nice queue. Yeah, I probably think that was a boxer setup, man. There was something weird going on there. Yeah. It was kind of weird that it was on queue where they're talking and he comes out with his little t-shirt and it looked like a Build-A-Bear workshop. <laughs> but uh, on to the next. That's on the back of him responding to that Sonny Edwards tweet that, yeah, time could be ticking on his time with Boxer. Then Eddie... In February, he said, I'm sure Ben Whitaker will be a match from fighter one day. I don't know what his contractual situation is. I've had no talks, but I see this kid being a star. 
The problem with Ben is you can build him in the UK, but you've got to fight him internationally. He should be on the Canelo cards. He should be on the Haney cards. He should be on the Saudi cards. In America, no promoter's going to put him on a TV slot because they put their own fighters on TV slots first. If Ben has aspirations to be a superstar, then obviously he's going to want to be with Matram. Now, it sounds to me, with Whitaker signed to 258 management, they're just waiting for how many fights he's got in his contract at Sky to run out, and they're gone. That's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like. You have to remember, Whitaker, Fraser Clark were both signed to 258. Fraser Clark's left, Whitaker's still there. And they was heading over to Matram. They was heading over to Matram after the Olympics. But Sky paid over the top money, undisclosed, to get their signatures. And from what I remember with Ben Whitaker, when he got the offer from Sky, he was like, well, what do I do now? And Eddie said, you've got to take the money. So it wasn't like they put a bag in front of him and he said, yeah, I'm going. Eddie said, you've got to take the money. And Whitaker went over to Sky, get the bag. But for Ben to air out boxer Ben Shalom and saying, this looks like a setup, when the Nigerian light heavy interrupted him. I'm not sure if he really believes that. But it looks like he's looking for any excuse. I'm not happy with this. I'm bouncing. He's looking for any excuse. Ben, having that kind of confidence is wasted if you're on a small, small platform. Fortunately for you, you're on Sky Sports. Um, but there's always Eddie Hearn sniffing around for good fighters. Uh, so I do need to show you something. Whether your dad showed you or not. Because I'm the one who showed him. But just take a look at this. You know... Um, obviously, you just had for, uh, future matchup signing Ben Whitaker up here as well, and I think <laughs> him, you know, him against Khalil Co. Down the line, he's a tremendous fight. Two great fighters. I know you battled hard for, for that signature. Didn't quite get it this time around, but you don't give up, do you, Eddie? No, at the end of the day, you let someone else spend the money, and when he's ready and he's had the education, we'll come in and we'll take him to the biggest platforms on the big fights. Never a day off. Never a day off. Always a pleasure. What are your thoughts? You know what? Um, I love Eddie, man. Uh, he's, he's obviously done great. Go on, bro. Yeah. Uh, he's obviously done well for himself. He's got a great platform, great fighters, and he knows how to manage fighters. Uh, he knows how to move boxers, but just for me at the time, the sky just looked the right thing for me. Ben Shalom and Boxer, they've got behind me and pushed me the way I need to, so I'm happy where I am, but Eddie, Eddie's a, a great promoter, and I, I do like him, to be fair.